In this video, we're going to learn about kinematics, which is a type of physics. Now, of course, I like that because I teach physics, but uh, there we go. So we're going to learn some physics terms. I just threw this thing because I think it's so funny from Harry Potter. <laughs> it's making fun of this thing. You're a wizard, Harry. <laughs> He's like, you're a unit of power, Harry. I'm a what? <laughs> it's a unit of power. All right, let's look at these terms we're going to need to know. We have S of T, and S is not speed. S is displacement for some reason, okay? So it's s displacement. Then we got V of T. So keep in mind, this is S as a function of T. So displacement as a function of time. It's called displacement. It's measured in meters. V of T is called velocity, and it's measured in meters per second. We've got A of T. It's acceleration measured in meters per second per second. That's why it's got meters per second squared. We've got T, which is time measured in seconds. These are the, the main terms we're going to be using and thinking about and discussing. So you kind of need to know these ones. So remember, the weird one is that S is displacement for some reason. So let's look at the dis uh, difference between distance and displacement. I think this will help you to understand it. So distance is how far you've actually traveled, whereas displacement is how far you are from where you started. And they can be different. Just to show you two examples here. So let's just say you walk uh, one meter north. So let's just pretend to here. I'll just draw that. So I walk one meter north. There we go. One meter that way. And then I walk one meter east. So then I go that way. One meter. Question is, what is my distance traveled? Well, my distance traveled, hopefully you'll see it's just easy. It's just one plus one. So that means it's just two meters. That's pretty easy. What about my displacement? How far away am I from home? Okay, so this is displacement. Display. It's supposed to be a C here. Displacement. How do I figure that out? My displacement is from here to here. Right, so I need to figure out that distance right there. So what is that distance? Well, I can use Pythagoras theorem since this is a right angle triangle. I know that uh, you know that distance right there. I'll call it x. I know that x squared equals one squared plus one squared. So that means my x squared equals, well, 1 squared is 1 plus 1, so that's just 2. Therefore, x is going to be technically plus or minus the square root of 2, but we're going to assume distances have to be positive. So it's actually going to be square root of 2. So that's going to be quite different. Uh, if we do this on our calculator, which we can, I can just open up a calculator and say, what is the square root of 2? Well, it's like 1.41 meters. So approximately 1.41 meters. Notice, though. Displacement was not the same as distance in this case. They're different. All right, let's look at this situation where I walk one meter north, then I go one meter east, then I go one meter south, and I go one meter west. So what's my distance traveled? Well, my distance traveled is just one plus one plus one plus one, so that's four meters. Nice and easy. What about my displacement, though? How far am I from home? Well, if you look at the question, I started off, let's say, here. And I went all the way up and I finished here. So actually, in this case, my displacement is 0. Do you notice then? So displacement and distance don't always have to be the same. Sometimes they are, but sometimes they're different. It all depends on what you did. Just be aware of that. So there is a difference between distance and displacement. OK, let me show you this one right here. I'll explain this dumb joke in a second, too. So I just want to give you a real-life physics example. So I always did this with my class. I would take you know, a can of Campbell's soup, because my last name is Campbell, and I would take it and roll it up an incline. I'd have a little detector, a uh, sort little of sonic rangers. It goes like little ticks. It goes tick, 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 tick. And what I would do is I would start it, and I would just roll the can up the hill. And of course, the, hill, the can will go up the hill. You don't have to be a physicist to know what will happen. Even my five-year-old daughter, she knows if I roll it up the hill, she knows it's going to stop and come back down. OK, so let's take a look at what the graph of displacement versus time might look like. The graph of displacement versus time, well, it'll start off at t equals 0. It'll start off here at 0. It'll go nice and curvy and smooth. It'll go up, then it'll come back down again, and eventually be back down at zero displacement. Because that's, you know, it's gone up, it's come back down again to home. But at some time, it's got a maximum distance away. That's my displacement versus time. Now, what's kind of nice about it, though, is I can do now the velocity. Now, the velocity is measured in meters per second. And let me show you something kind of neat about this. The velocity, we define it, so v of t, we can say the velocity as a function of time, is equal to the derivative of the displacement. 
versus time. So this is an important equation here. So what this tells you is that if you take this one right here, the derivative of this graph tells you this graph. So look carefully then. If I look at this one, hmm, what is the gradient here at this point? You notice the gradient is some positive number, so that means it has to be some positive y value. Over here, do you notice right here the gradient is flat? Right here, the, this, this graph here is flat here. The gradient is zero at this time. So at this exact time then, this is zero. And similarly, we have this one right here. You notice the gradient is negative, and it's, by the way, the same value as this is, just negative. If I do it right, I end up with a straight line going like this. I'll just try to make them line up, sort of like that. There we go. So this here is what the velocity will look like. Do you notice, by the way, this is probably a quadratic. This looks like a linear graph, so that's kind of cool. Well, then what do we say for acceleration? Acceleration, this we have in a formula booklet, so you don't have to memorize it. Well, the acceleration is the derivative of the velocity. So we can say it's dv dt. Or I guess we can say it's also the second derivative of the position. So we could say that. We could say it's uh, you know d squared s over dt squared. Turns out that's on your formula booklet, so you don't have to memorize that. That's kind of nice. So I'm glad for that. So this one right here, at least you don't have to memorize. So how could we find this then? Well, we take the derivative of the velocity that tells us the acceleration. I'd better label it properly. I'll say the acceleration, which is in meters per second squared. So the acceleration, let's see here. Mm. The acceleration is going to be the gradient of this one. Well, the gradient right here is some negative number. And the gradient here is some negative number. And the gradient here is some negative number. In fact, it's the same number everywhere because it's just a linear graph. It's got the same graph. So because of that, because the slope or the gradient is the same here as the same here as the same here, some negative number, that means I'm going to have some negative number here, whatever that number is. It'll be here. Over here, it'll be the same negative number. Over here, it'll be the same negative number. In other words, this will be a flat. It'll be a constant graph. Whoops. It'll be something that looks like. I just got to raise it here. Something like that. Isn't that kind of nice? So the acceleration is the second derivative of the position or the displacement, or it's the first derivative of velocity. What I like is that the units will all make sense in a second, too. So the, the trick I'm going to show you is this. When you line them up as displacement, velocity, acceleration, the trick for you is this. You ready? Any time you go down in these graphs, if you line them up like this right here, down is the derivative. Okay. In other words, the gradient. So every time you go down by one, you take the gradient or the derivative. And conversely, any time you go up, well, what's the opposite of a derivative, remember? It's the integral. So up is the integral, in other words, the area under the curve. So this is a trick for you. So that means, let's say you start off with velocity, and you're asked, what's the displacement? Well, then you got to think, ooh, i got to go up. So up means I take the integral. Or if you start off with, I don't know, displacement, and they say, what's the velocity? Oh, well, then I know i got to go down, so I do the derivative. That's a nice little trick. Now, what's kind of cool, the units work out. Watch carefully. If I do the gradient of this, doesn't the gradient have units of like y over x? So it's like meters per second. Hey, that's the units. And if I take the gradient of this one, isn't it these y's divided by these s's, uh, so this x value? So it's meters per second divided by seconds. That's why it's meters per second squared. And conversely, what if I'm, I don't know, what if I want to take this and I say, hey, what's the area under the curve? In other words, I want to get back up to here. Well, the area under the curve would be the length times the height. In other words, it would be meters per second times seconds. Well, meters per second times second means the seconds will cancel out. Hey, so like all the units work out. It's beautiful. So my pro tip to you is know this and you're fine. You don't even need any of this stuff, it turns out. As long as you know if you put the displacement, velocity, acceleration in order like this, down is the derivative, up is the integral, boom, you're done. So now remember I said the acceleration is a second derivative of position? Well, turns out we have a word in physics for the third derivative of position. This is really what this means here. And what is that? Now, you don't need to know this for the course. You just need to know these. But just in case you want to know why this is a silly and funny joke for physicists, because the first derivative of position, we call it velocity. The second derivative of position, we call it acceleration. Well, it turns out the third derivative of position, they call it x, but we can call it s. 
The third derivative, as it turns out, it's called the jerk. So it's don't be a ha ha. Don't be a jerk. So again, just to remind you. So let's say at S then V then A. It doesn't matter what the graphs look like. If you have V of T, so if you let's say you start with this and you want to find acceleration, what do you do? Remember. Just remember this right here. Remember, down is derivative, up is the integral. This is really what I remember. In other words, the area under the curve. This is my whole trick that I remember here. Just this. Just this. So let's see if we can figure this out. You start with V of t. Boom, you have an equation for that. And you're asked for the acceleration. Acceleration means you have to go down, right? So it's derivative. Great. So I know that A of t, the acceleration, will be the derivative of V because down is derivative. Boom. That's how you conceptually solve it. You just have to go ahead and figure it out. What if you start with V and you want displacement? In other words, what will the displacement look like? Well, you start with V, you want the displacement. Ooh, up is the integral. So now I know it'll be the integral of V of t dt from wherever to wherever. How about this? You start with S of t and you want to know the velocity. Oh, well, you go down, don't you? Therefore, velocity is going to be the derivative of the position. See, so this little trick helps you to figure out anything. I could have done, you know, what if you start off with acceleration and you want the velocity? Oh, well, then you take the integral. You might wonder what happens if I take the derivative of the acceleration. Nothing you need for the course, but it turns out you actually get this thing called jerk. So let's go ahead and calculate. To, oh, no, never mind. We have another example here. I wanted to show you this. What if I uh, have this velocity, and what if it goes down below the x-axis? So that's the important part. So what if this area right here is, I don't know, what if I make this value right here uh, 2.5? Let's just say, so this area here is 2.5. What if I make this one right here? What if that area right there? Now, because it's below the axis, maybe I'll make it minus 1.5, let's just say. Let's look at what happens here. We have an equation for the distance traveled from t1 to t2. So in other words, you know, from here to here, maybe, whatever. Um, we have an equation for it for the distance. Well, distance is the we just take the areas, but we take the absolute value. So this is actually on your formula booklet, which is nice, so you don't have to memorize this. It just goes like this. It goes the integral from, well, t1 to t2. So we'll just call it, yeah, t1 to t2. And we're going to take the absolute value of uh, v of t here. And that's because we've got v. Remember, if we start with v, we want the distance, we go up. So that's why we do the integral. So uh, this right here, we have the absolute value of v of t dt. Whereas if we just want the displacement, it's going to be just from t1 to t2. And we're not going to take the absolute value. We'll just leave it. We'll just say v of t dt. In other words, it's allowed to be negative. That's sort of the idea here. And good news, this is on your formula booklet. So you don't have to memorize, which is really nice. Okay. So this one right here was on your formula booklet. Maybe I'll just copy that because I want to paste that over here so we have it. There we go. So this is what we needed. So for example, in this particular example here, let's just uh, take it like this. If I knew this was the area and area, I could say the distance in this particular example here, the distance will be, let's see, it'll be the integral. Well, distance traveled from like 0 to 2, let's just say. So from 0 to 2 of the absolute value. In other words, I'm going to do, uh, well, let's say like this, absolute value of v of t dt which means it'll be 2.5, that's that first distance, plus the second distance, and I'm going to make it a positive. That's the important part. Do you notice? I had to make that one right there positive because I'm only considering the absolute value. Okay, so that means that 2.5 plus 1.5, well, that'll give me 4 meters. That'll be my distance, okay? But my displacement, let's look at what that is, just to show there's a difference. Displacement will be the integral from 0 to 2 of just v of t without caring about the absolute value. In other words, let negatives be negatives. So it's going to be 2.5 minus 1.5. And if I do that right there, I end up with just 1, don't I? Because so, this here, here cancels out. So I just get 1 meter. Do you notice I'm closer to home? Maybe this will make sense because at first I've got a positive velocity, but then I've got a negative velocity. I'm coming towards home. So maybe I've gone like to the right and now I'm going left. So there is a difference, okay? So you have to use this. It's the absolute value that makes the difference here. Okay, let's do some examples. I like this one. She asked for time and distance. Maybe she wants velocity. 
no. Um, but it's funny. So a particle moves in a straight line with this equation, v of t equals blah, 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 blah. This is a quadratic opening upwards. Find the equation for the particle's displacement. And we also know that s of 0 is 4. Well, we start with velocity. We want displacement. Let's use that little trick. Remember that little trick I just showed you? So we've got s, v, and a. Remember, down is derivative. I'm just showing you my little trick here, right? Up is the integral or the area. So which do I want? I start with v, and I want to know displacement. Displacement is going up, so that's the integral. So see how I can just from that figure out that I know that my displacement, s of t then, will be the integral of v of t dt. I don't know where to go from and to. I'll figure that out later. But I'm just going to go ahead and do this. But conceptually, that was the key to solving it. Now it just becomes a matter of just doing an integral. So let's see. Let's do the integral of 6t squared plus 2t minus 3, all that dt. Well, remember how to do an integral? We use this rule for exponents, where we always take the exponent, make it one more, and divide by that. So 6t squared becomes 6t cubed over 3. Then plus 2t, this becomes, well, it's to the 1 right now, so it becomes 2 over 2. And this becomes 3t, because it was technically t to the 0, now it becomes t to the 1 over 1. There we go. It's like this. Don't forget, plus c. Well, some things cancel out, thankfully. So the 6 and the 3 cancel out, and I just get a 2. This here just cancels out and disappears. So now I've got s of t equals, let's see, it's going to be 2t cubed plus t squared minus 3t plus c. But what is c? Turns out this information right here will help me to solve for it. Watch, this right here tells me everything I need to know for c. So what can I do with this? Well, I know that when t is 0, so I know this, right? When t equals 0, I know that s equals 4. Well, that means I'll, I'll put that in. So 4 equals 2 times 0 cubed plus 0 squared minus 3 times 0 plus c. Well, look carefully what happens here. This cancels out, this cancels out, this cancels out. So what do I have? c equals 4. So finally, my final, final answer then is s of t equals 2t cubed, let's see, plus t squared minus 3t plus 4. That's my answer. So do you notice we're just practicing and playing with integrals. The key was to solve it conceptually. That was this piece right here. Then you just used your information, and we're using what we've learned before. Last example. Looks gross. We can totally do this. We have displacement. We want velocity. Remember, let's go back here. How do we do this? If I, dis I start with displacement, I want velocity. I go down. I take the derivative. Aha. So that's conceptually solved now. So now I know. I can just write it down. I can say, aha, v of t is just going to be ds dt. It's just going to be the derivative. So now we can go ahead and solve for vt. So I can say vt equals, now this is a derivative. So um, I think it's a chain rule derivative, in fact, because I've got e to the 2t. Remember how we do chain rule? Chain rule is going to be a derivative of the outside with the original inside. Now the derivative of the outside is just e to the 2t. And then uh, I got to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which would be 2. So I'll have a 2 in front then. Now to figure out this one, maybe it helps to rewrite the original function. So I'll say e to the 2t, that's true, that's the same. But this one, I'll write it to be more calculus friendly. So I'll say t to the power of 1 half. Yeah, I'll use that. Now, how do I do this derivative? Well, remember derivatives, you take the exponent, put it in front, make it one less. So watch carefully then. I'm going to say, uh, let's see, it's going to be plus. Well, the 1 half comes in front, so it's 1 half times t. And what's 1 half minus 1? In other words, 0.5 minus 1. You could think of it as 1 half minus 2 halves, which is minus 1 half. I'll just do that sort of off to the side. So that means I know this here is to the power of minus 1 half. Now let's maybe fix it up a little bit, just to make it look prettier. So I have v of t then. It's going to be, let's see, 2e to the 2t. And remember what this means. t to the minus 1 half means it's 
Well, first I still have the 1 over 2 hanging out there. And something to the minus uh, exponent means it's on the bottom. But remember also what t to the 1 half means. So I can make it even one step further, right? Because I'll just rewrite this here. Hold on. Plus 1 over 2. And remember what something to the power of 1 half is? It's a square root. So I've got this. So this might have looked really gross. I think it does. But there we go. We can actually solve it. But again, the conceptual part of it was just using this kinematics rules. This trick right here I think is really useful for you. Okay, Down as a derivative, up as the integral. You basically have everything you need for kinematics is actually right here, I think, at least. Other than the dis distance versus displacement part. But you get an equation for that uh, in your formula booklet, so that's actually kind of nice. You also get that if you need it. There we go. We're done with kinematics.